Or kind of middle and end. Please, every, every scene, every whatever you do has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, we don't want to see life like that, but that is the way it works. So beginning, middle, end. But that's very boring, eh? So then we have to see the right middle. More and more, more and more, more and more, more and more, more and more. Well, yeah, of course, yeah, 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 and only then, my act of the old wound, right? And then that's the end of your scene, okay? It's like, jump, jump. No, you can start with act of the old wound and then why? That's much more interesting. So, you can, when I say beginning, middle, end, I don't always mean by people entering. It's boring, it's dead screen time. So, watch when you write your scenes. Sometimes you write it like that, but you cut it back on your script where you edit yourself. So your beginning can be the middle of the fight and your middle can be something else and your end can be something else. Once again, it's where you start and where you're going to. So you really need to see that in every, every little scene. Whether it's a two second clip, it has even been, every single shot, yeah. Yeah. every single cut. I never want to listen to that, but I have to know that I have to see that then where's my beginning and my middle my end. And usually by your middle or your end, there needs to be what? Yeah. It's just again like the last time. I just the next one. No, okay, they came your twist. Now with the vendor place, otherwise it's boring, no? Huh? So you have to work up to something. Very, very important. If, if the scene starts with you and me being loving dubby and it ends with you and me being loving dubby then it's a romantic movie and it's the final scene, okay? <laughs> but if, it, if we start one way, there has to be a growth in both of us. She must become more lovey dovey and I must be not lovey dovey, whatever. Or she must convince me to be lovey dovey, whatever, whatever. But even with so that, even in the last scene of your romantic film, with the final kiss, you know, there's a still moment where the guy and the girl are there and maybe the girl kind of quickly moves away and then lets him in. Even that's the beginning, middle and end. Yeah. And that's what makes it interesting. And if, you know, because you're working on a big screen, people notice, and that's where your actors are so important. And please don't write dialogue and say, oopsie, flippy, it's not like you. It's just a little action thing or a change in the face that says something else is happening. So don't have a scene where people are begin friendly and then they end friendly. Great ways to start where both feel differently and then you get a twist and maybe the audience think, ah, oh, he's going to talk around now. And she doesn't. Ah, oh, okay, the bad boy gets the good girl uh, to take drugs now or what. And you think it's going to happen, it's going to happen because she's fresh rising her and then she does or she doesn't. But you never show the answer in that scene, please. You can drag that. And it's not like you're panic, but you want to get your audience to watch more and see what process she goes through, the good girl, or the good boy then. Uh, let's not stereotype, it can be a bad girl getting the good boy to do whatever. Okay, but the twist is so important, so that your scene changes at the end. There's a difference. And then the last word is, how should your scene end? And that's the next word. Cliffhanger, please. Uh, at the end of the scene, people have to think, what next? So when you write dialogue, you will find a lot of times the last bit of your scene you can actually cut because you've said it too much. End before the end. But sometimes you have to write the whole scene and then you can say, oh no, actually if I end three, three sentences before I want it to end, it's more interesting because there's a question with the viewer and there's a question with the character. Because you don't want to spoon feed your viewer and say, oh, this is what's going to happen all the way. You want them to wonder. Because they have to watch 10 more scenes, uh, please. I mean, there is the flip side, but you also want to kill them enough so they're not completely confused. Yes. You, know, you watch a lot of art films and then you're kind of like, whoa, what's going on? But at the end of the film, you're still, whoa, what's going on? You don't want to do that. Like yeah. So it's as simple as that. Beginning, middle, and end. But then where do you begin? And the twist. Always the twist. Because, and why is the scene in your movie? If it doesn't serve a purpose, <coughs> Then you don't need to see. Then you do. You don't need to start shooting. That's a difficult one because, as you know, you have, they say as a writer you have to kill your little darling. Um, or when you write poetry, it's so beautiful. I'm working with my heart, it comes from my soul, it bears everything in me. Yes! And then somebody else comes in and they say, oh, whoa, I'm trying. 
So the things that you think are wonderful are sometimes just a way for you to get to a way where other people can see what you think in writing a lot of books like that. But it's good to write everything. Write, write your heart out. It's good to write it. But I'm not going to get to and I'll be inside the this one to feel funny, fluffy, duffy. So you have too many roses. You just prove them. Right? Get a streamlined process. Right? I will quickly tell you, yeah, dialogue versus visuals. That we'll look at later. Do you always have to have dialogue to tell a story? We've seen that, we don't know. Huh? So sometimes you can look at a scene that you've written and you can say, we call it talking heads. Uh, actually, I can show this in a little bridge scene. Things can happen between people. Somebody can pass somebody something at the breakfast table. And just in the way the mother looks at the daughter, you can see that last night's fight was not really resolved. Maybe they said it was resolved. But you can see in the mother's eyes that it's not happening. That's where you need your actors to portray it. Huh? Uh, and that's much more effective than the mother saying, because in real life, what happens in real life? We don't say what we feel. So when you make a movie, that's a nice thing to work with. Um, don't let everybody speak up all the emotions, because it doesn't always work like that. People say something else. If, um, they use techniques, communication techniques. I want that when I say that, so I get you to come wrong. So use that with your character when you write that. Don't always say, I want the sugar. You can say, oh, something sweet would be nice. But yeah, that's a silly example. <laughs> that's what people do, Mark. But then again, yeah, if you want to say something sweet would be nice, and it is about passing the sugar, and maybe it is a love scene, and maybe it's just what that meant, maybe it has two meanings. Yeah. 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 Everything can have two meanings. And when you have that kind of thing, then it's really great. Look, I'm sure you all feel your parents are really great. But mostly, they don't do it with words. It's you, you feel judged by the way they look at you, or the way you think they look at you, whatever. Um, and those things aren't really said. Okay, sometimes, you know, like in writing, we used to get writing, it's because it's quite like simple and good. Then you can go on again, you get another writing. These days, it's all subtle psychology. And if you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, you will see a lot of things of your own said.